is. Ah, you see, recording is progress. Isn't that nice of Zoom to put that out there for me? <laughs> and let's make sure we're on. Looks like we're on. Yep. Yep. It looks like we're going out strong on, the, on Facebook, which is our usual place to put this. Let's see here. Are we going out? Yep. 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 There it is. Okay. We got it all going here now. Anyway, uh, let's see here. Uh, hey, how have, how have you been this week? It, this is our weekly pop-up show, or as I like to call it, to this week, nice people being civil. Uh, let's see here. Let's admit our very civil citizen panel uh, and uh, see what uh, what happens here. Are they uh, are they here? Are they going? Are they? Yes, there we go. We got Edward Berger. Hello, Edward. Hello. And Andrew Deutsch and Charlie Wallace and Len LaFrisco. We won't have Shecky on today because Shecky went down to Florida to uh, get ready to go on his cruise. Mm -hmm. What great timing. Yeah, what great timing. <laughs> on the good ship Omicron. Omicron of the seas. Yeah, uh, good on the good ship, Omicron. Yeah, that's good. That's good. It fits. It fits. Uh, boy, uh, no, I hope he's okay. I mean, I, I would not get on a cruise right now, okay? But Been on 20, I love it more than anything. I wouldn't get on a cruise ship right now if my life depended on it. He had, does more, more uh, 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 what do you call it, the cruises than anybody I know. Yeah, okay. I, I love it. It's a great vacation. Yeah, well, yeah, that's what a lot of people say. Marjorie doesn't seem to agree with me, though. So well, I don't think we're... Leave her ass home. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of cruise do you go on, though? Do you go on one of the ones where there are 3,000 people on the ship? Oh, yeah. yeah. You've done those, huh? Yeah. The, yeah. One that, the one that has sure. a car carnival rides and everything on it? There's Come bumper on, cars. Man. There's ice skating. There's... Yeah. Uh, it's incredible what they have on these. There's a lot well, of slides. Admit it, Len. You've been on the hedonism cruise. We know. <laughs> well, no. My question is, my question is, with all those things available there, why go on a cruise? Why not just stay at home where they all are anyway? Yeah. It's nice yeah. to wake up every morning in a new port, you know, yeah. and get off and go check out the, the... The only problem is you're only there from like, you know, seven or eight in the morning. Well, you have morning. to go. You see, you have to go where the boat goes. Yeah. What I like to do on a vacation is say, pull into for Paris, all right? In Paris, rent a car, and then just drive for two weeks. Sure. You know, um, uh, you can always find accommodations and places to stay and so on and so forth. But you can also say, hey, let's stop here and look at this, or let's stop there and yeah. look at that, you know? And uh, No argument, you know? I mean, yeah. that's a nice way to do it. Yeah. And Len, I just got a news alert that where you are, there's been a 6.2 magnitude earthquake in Northern California. Did you feel anything? Uh, no. <laughs> no? <laughs> How much? I think Six. this is here, a 6.2 magnitude. Oh, my God. Off, that's a real. That's pretty Northern good. California. That's pretty it strong. Rattled, it, uh, here's, here's the creative writing. It rattled a wide swath of the state. I wonder. I wonder. Okay, now wait a minute. It was. It was not there. It was out somewhere. It was. It off said it was just offshore. Yeah. And rattled a wide it's swath. Eureka. So that's about three hundred miles north of me. So I didn't right. Know. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Um. So, uh, hello, Marjorie. Where are you call? Where are you calling from today? I'm calling down the hall. <laughs> <laughs> She's call, calling from our very expensive bedroom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, you know, you know what it is? We're getting to the point in our life uh, where. Uh, well, we don't give a shit. Well, <laughs> I, I said to her, you know, I don't know how this place smells because I live in it. Right. Yeah. But I don't know. Does it smell like every home we went into where an old person lived now? Old people smell. You know that old people, you know the old people smell you get in old people's homes, you know? That's why I put up the windows, Alex. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know when I come over, Alex. Okay, let me know, will you? Uh, and, and, and um, uh, you'll, huh? you'll, you'll know by how long he stays. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, but I just, and, and, and that and the other thing is that we have like a couch, okay? And it was a big, beautiful. Oh, he's couch. making it. Excuses for a thirty-year-old couch. No, wait. Let me. Let me. I'm not making excuses. I'm not making excuses for a thirty-year-old couch, but it's a huge couch. All right. And now some of the couch seats are getting a bit, shall we say, wet, worn. Okay. Um, the places where people don't sit, it looks like it's brand new. But the place where you sit all the time, and you can't change the covers from one part of the place to the other because they're different sizes, okay? Mm -hmm. And so we're at this point in our life where we go, should we clear this up or just cover it with a blanket? (laughs) (laughs) You didn't save the old clear covers from an old Jewish grandma's couch? No, no. (laughs) But but I I just, and the other other part is, should we buy a new couch? Should we buy the other option is to just put everything in clear plastic? Well, that's what he said. Yeah. Yes, that's what he said. No, we, we don't. Grandmother do that. Had that. No, we don't do that. But I mean, it's it's uh, like uh, we're thinking: should we buy a new one? About five thousand bucks. Well, we could do that. But how long are we going to live? <laughs> <laughs> are you worried about you, getting your money's worth? Well, like, you, really? you, you, plan on, you plan on taking the money with you? At this point, do we care? You know, we might not live long enough to spend the money we have, so we should probably buy a couch. Just enjoy it while we're here. Good, good, yeah. good shot. Good answer, people. Make room for all the company. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So my question is, should I do it one of these shows next uh, next Monday? Would you all be here? I will. I'm here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'll do Possibly. one. I'll do one Monday I'm, I'm, on our I'm week off on Gab. I'll off. still do one here. Because I, I will I, not be here. I just wanted to give you. I a like answer. this. This is a lot of nice people. Here comes Jeff Stein. What uh, what do you do for your birthday? Anything fun? Oh yeah, really, really fun. Tell them, tell them, Marjorie. We, <laughs> was she was she good looking? The, yeah, oh. yeah, no. <laughs> what happened? What happened was uh, uh, we were deciding. We had reservations at what the Milling Room, which is a restaurant we love. Okay. First for dinner. First for dinner. Then we did. I uh, decided lunch. Well, because, wait, that's because they were talking about major storms and cold. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So, uh, yeah, and then we then we turn on the TV set and they said, uh, the weather out there is COVID. <laughs> Order in. Order in. And so she said, we both agreed we probably shouldn't go out to eat. It's just oh, not. Uh, Steve, how do you feel about that? You live in New York. Yeah, I'm starting to feel your way. I didn't for a while, but it's crazy out there. I mean, I had a cold for the last three days, and I couldn't get a test because the lines are three hours long. Yeah. And they're all kids that want to leave New York. It's insane. Between the holidays and everyone leaving and you know, everyone getting tested and the numbers going up this much. I mean, I don't feel like people that are getting it are getting anything bad. I think they're getting, you know, yeah. very cold-like. I mean, I was pretty sure I had it, but I got it, finally got a home. Someone brought over a home test and it was negative. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so I'm... You know, I had I was going to go to a concert tonight. I was supposed to see Los Lobos tonight, and I just got the phone call from the venue canceled. Wow, it's starting to get scary. It's starting to get scary. I think. Yeah. Yeah, it is. So I guess we can't get you coming up town anytime soon. That's uh, probably not going to happen on Sunday when we planned it. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> Next year. Oh, we're we're we, you know we're hey we're here all the time. Just call. <laughs> well, now you got me worried you're going to die soon. <laughs> 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 But that could happen. Yeah, I'd, I'd really regret that. Man. Now, by the way, Jeff brought a date. I see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who's who's that with you, Jeff? That is Molly. Yeah. The Molly? Hello. Hey, Molly. Hello, Molly. Move closer to Jeff. Move in. Move closer to Jeff. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. That's Molly. Hi, I, Molly. I assume a relation. She's my granddaughter. Wow. Oh, wow. Wow. It's 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 bad enough you're a grandfather. But what's even worse is that you have a older g- woman as your as your as your granddaughter. How old are you? I'm 14. Oh, well, you see that's an older woman. <laughs> oh. So so Molly, your job yeah. is he starts to nod off. Just shake him a little bit, okay? <laughs> her, her birthday was yesterday. Really? Happy birthday, Molly. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> so how, how many grandchildren do you have, Jeff? Four. 
four. All ladies. Oh, really? all teenagers. Really? Uh-oh. Well, that's good. Yeah. That's good news. My business manager, Gary Haber, who is 84, is like onto his what? Third or fourth great grandchild? Great grand. Oh, okay. When you, get to, when you get to great grand, you're going, wow, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I have two. All right. two. Two grandchildren? Yep, 13 and four. Wow. 13 and four, okay. wow. Uh, and, and here comes Mandy. Hey. Mandy, Mandy, probably. Mandy, where is she? Here, here she comes. Nothing. Here, there she is. Nothing. There's our babe. Uh, <laughs> let me... Let me ask you a question, Mandy. We've been asking this question. Do you, do you, you, I know you're a mother. Okay. Do you have any grandchildren? No. Okay. All right. Fine. Okay. But how old are you? How, how old's your daughter? They are 26 and 22. 26 and 22. And neither of them have decided to have children yet. Right. They're neither one of them are married. They're in long term relationships, but they're both still in college. Because so. my mother every other week would say to me, When are you going to get me a grandchild? <laughs> my mother said to me, like she I just, have control. Yeah. Yeah. The creation of children with them. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter who you have it with, just get me a grandchild. <laughs> you want to it's your responsibility, right? In fact, it was a on the, Saturday night on the this week about that, about a bunch of old women going. They said, well, what would you like for the, your holiday season? You say, Grandchild. You know, it's funny y'all are talking about this because I was just visiting my really good friend who just had her first child um, in April. And he was fun and all. But I remember when she I thinking, I am so glad I don't have grand. Like, it made me think I don't really want to be a grandmother somehow. I didn't. <laughs> That urge to like you know the I advantage I, I i don't know what the advantage of being just a father is okay <laughs> um i don't have any children that i can at least visit on a weekend um but i it, what happened was is that um uh now i forgot what i was gonna say see that happens, that happens. Go. 82. i just turned 82 yeah um, i'm sure we can find you some on the oh internet. no what i was gonna say is <laughs> The advantage of grandchildren, and I think Jeff will agree with this, is is that you don't have to raise them, right? right. So you can be, you can go over and be Grandma Mandy for the day and dote on your kids, and maybe they can even leave the kids off for a night or something like that. But you know they're going to be gone after a while. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know. That's what I mean. Talking about the sleep schedule and feeding you know and it's her first child and i was you know advising her but i thought i'm so glad i don't have to deal with that. i was just left there like oh thank god i don't have to deal with that oh i don't sad. know how i don't know how women put up with babies to be honest with you yeah i mean i've never gone through that experience and i'm sure i would be an entirely different person than i am now had i had children marjorie would be an entirely different person if she had had children maybe yeah you know i would hate to be her child <laughs> you know, but you're not Isn't laughing. You're not laughing, Marjorie. That's a joke. You're not funny, laughing. Alex. What? It wasn't funny, Alex. Oh, it wasn't funny, Alex. Okay, good. Uh anyway. Um hello there. It's uh it's uh it's Brian. Brian. You're not that's not your McLaren, is it, that you're in? Are you talking to me? Yeah. yeah. I don't know anybody else in the McLaren. No, I'm not in my McLaren. No. And the police are right there. So luckily as uh <laughs> no, I'm in my uh, Cadillac. Yeah. Your Cadillac? Yeah. What, he's an Cadillac. Eye my, about he's, it. Now he's a big car guy. Be I bet it isn't a modern day Cadillac, is it? No, no, it is. It is. I have yeah. my 1934, but this is my 2017 CT6. It's the big Cadillac, so it's nice. Oh really? My dad had, my dad had yeah. Cadillacs, but the eye doctor took care of them. That's that's Alex's joke. Don't take those from him. He's old. Yeah. Oh, is it? Sorry, Alex. Yeah. I, I, I've only got a few jokes left. So please. Yeah. Oh my please. God! This person just. Yeah, I'm in Lodi, so I'm leaving now, going back home. Stuck in Lodi again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Mike Chisholm, you're stuck in Canada. 
I'm stuck in Canada. I'm sorry I haven't been on the past few weeks. Our uh, production schedule has moved my show to uh, Mondays, unfortunately. So I just finished one, so I thought I'd jump in. I miss you guys like crazy. Yeah, well, uh, was, when are you going to get back to being calling us and not competing with us? <laughs> no hey, kidding. I want, well, I, and Mike, I, I watched the show live, so I should what? be able to schedule around. You're, you're breaking up. Oh, what's, more, what's my maple syrup in that internet connection? Yeah, yeah right. Mike from Canada. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's frozen. It's Canada. It's frozen. Yeah, they, Can they, only, they only have DSL in Canada. And uh, God, I, remember, I remember when I got DSL. You weren't around then, Marjorie, in San Francisco. Yes, I, I got a DSL line put in, and I was just so happy. I The speed I was getting of 80 megs a yep. second was just amazing you know but i had to put two, had to put two cell phones. Oh, oh, goodbye goodbye Bye. See, i don't know if you heard but 14 year olds don't want to talk about dsl 14 year olds, 14 year olds don't want to talk to a bunch of old people okay <laughs> we have someone on 14 years old yeah yeah yeah, yeah. jeff's grandkid jeff's grand oh okay yeah I can't see everybody on this screen, so that's okay. Just talk to us. You can hear us, right? We can see yeah. you. Think of it as Good. radio, okay? <laughs> you remember what radio was, don't you? Yeah. What was it, Alex? Huh? What was it? It was a, a medium in which people uh, could uh, listen to people uh, talk on a, a a radio thing, and and the signal went to everybody. You didn't have to have a line going into your house. You would think technology would have been invented in the reverse, that we first yeah. would have had something where you had to have a stream and one stream for everybody, and that was impractical. But hey, I've got a new idea. One stream goes out, and everybody in this whole area can get the signal. Now, wouldn't that be an advance over what we have? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when yeah. Elon Musk gets what he wants, we're going to have that again, right? Satellite yeah. broadcasting the internet all down to us. Yeah, that could be. That could yeah. be. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I, I just, uh, uh, what, you know, I mean, this whole podcast thing is a piece of crap, to be honest. Yeah. With you, you know, I mean, uh, well, I'm going to listen to my podcast today. What is it? Well, it's another murder mystery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you guys have any regular podcasts? I mean, besides this one that you listen to, and you don't even Mine. listen to this one, you're on it. Mine. Hmm? I got four. Y yours, yeah. Mine's on I, I, listen, I listen to Mike Chisholm on the dad's one. Hey, uh, thanks, man. I was a guest on that one. Thanks for that. I appreciate yeah, it. That's, yeah, it's very, uh, very cool to hear a lot of the stories. Oh, really? What What? What, what is the dad's one? Uh Brian. I was a guest uh, because of the book coming that 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 came out. Um, I had a guest spot on uh, a guy has a podcast called Dad Up. It's about being better dad. Just just that, you know, a uh, pretty simple concept. And so I talked a little bit about what we went through with our granddaughter and how we supported our kids and all that. We talked about the book, and then I talked about what my wife is building her the men's mental wellness app that she's building. So it was a good it was a good episode. I, I, like to, I like to start a dad channel and have topics like what's the best belt to use? <laughs> uh, no, you get in trouble. <laughs> can't do all that stuff anymore. You can't yeah. you can't even joke about it anymore. Yeah, you're gonna get in trouble just for joking about it. Oh, I'm glad I'm not a comedian in this day and age. Oh, I, I just oh, heard God. a really good one. Did you hear what happened to Terry Gilliam? No. Well, Okay, so Terry okay, let's explain before you go ahead. Let's explain. Everybody know who Terry Gilliam is here. Terry Gilliam well, maybe, did the uh, animated uh, Python, and he directed a lot of great movies, Brazil yeah. and many others. But um, yeah, he was doing a production of Into the Woods at the Old Vic in London. Yeah, and because on his Facebook page he asked his followers. He said, "Watch um, He said, "Do me a favor, something like something." I'm misquoting. I'm paraphrasing, but he asked them to watch the Chappelle special because he wanted to hear their opinions about it. As a result of that, the play is canceled from the old Vic. What? Wow. Oh, wow. Not putting on the, oh, what? 
<laughs> insane. Had to, had to move it to the Theater Royal in Bath. It was a far cry from London, from the old Vic. I mean, uh, what, 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 what thinking goes behind that? I mean, it, to begin with, it's not something he did at the old Vic. That's to begin with. Not something he did at, at all. I mean, just definitely, asked, all he did was ask people, him. watch this special, and then we're going to talk about it. You can tell me whether you think it's inappropriate or not. Yeah. Jeff, Jeff Garland left his show because... He was fired. He, was, he, was fired. he wasn't fired. He, he yeah. quit because they, they wanted him to apologize for kidding around on the set, and he wouldn't do it. No, I, I, I mean, I know some people who are very close to that situation, and they said he was let go because of that. It wasn't his choice to leave. Well, he he claims it is, and I don't know. That's interesting that you heard something different. But yeah, no, I mean the guy's got a potty mouth, but that's all it is, right? <laughs> yeah. And and by the way, I watched the Chappelle <laughs> thing, and I thought that it was just the opposite of what he's being criticized for. Yeah, I thought it was brilliant. Absolutely. You know, it's very interesting. Maybe they were asking it this was on sixty Minutes. They asked Trevor Noah what he thought about the uh, Chappelle. Yeah. Thing. Right. It, did he go over the line? That was a good answer. And, and the, the answer he came up with was, well, you know, about 50 percent of the people don't think he was wrong and 50 percent of the people think he was wrong. So where's the line? It depends on where you're standing. It, you know, it depends so on who's louder, who's louder and has more fake indignation. It, right. You know, I mean, I watched it and I thought it was brilliant, as it oh, always is with Chappelle. And I just felt that, uh, you know, uh, uh, to begin with, I will always stand up for the comedian, always mm -hmm. stand up for him, uh, you know, and say that what he, what he's doing is his job. And his job is maybe even to upset you, yeah. you know, but to to report the world as he sees it. Yeah. Okay. And, and to say that somebody is, you know, it, it, to begin with, it, what was very funny is that the, the, at uh, Netflix, there were a bunch of people who were protesting against the treatment of transgenders at the hands of Dave Chappelle on his special. And they were protesting outside of Netflix. And it's, the fact was, Netflix hires transgenders. You know, what are you yeah. protesting? Well, I, yeah. I listened to someone and, and decided to respond and said, what is it specifically that he said? And the person said, well, he's blaming us for this person's suicide. And I said, so you agree with him? I mean, that, if you remember that in the bit, that this, this transgender woman, that he gave a job, that he had an opening for him, he was encouraging to be a comic, ended up committing suicide after the, yeah. the, yeah. the, the, the woke people coming after her. So uh. they, they were all upset about it because he was basically, in their eyes, blaming them for this person's suicide. Yeah, and that's not what woke, wokeness couldn't lead to that. We're the good people. Uh. Yeah, it's 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 no, they're the bad people. They're the new McCarthy era of our times. You know, I, I lived through McCarthyism, something most people do not remember. I'm sure none of you were around for it. Most of you. I think Jeff was. Uh, Marjorie certainly was. Mandy was. I was four years old. Compared to the rest of us, Mandy's the child of the group. Uh, and uh, <laughs> she's the, she's our Darla in our Little Rascals episode. And Andrew, here. Andrew's younger than me. No, I'm not. Yeah, yeah. I thought I was a year older than you. I know Brian's what one year younger than you, too. I think I'm my cousin might be younger than you. You were born, you were born in, what, 65? April 66. Sorry? 66. April 66. 66. Oh, so, right. so you're four months older than me. See? You're the baby. Ah, that's it. The date's off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, going, I'm, going, I'm going back to my marriage, Mandy. <laughs> November, November, November 67. Okay. The baby. November 67 for you, Brian? Yep. So you're, you're, younger, you're younger than Mandy. Yep. Yeah, Chisholm's Not younger us. than all of us. Chisholm, Chisholm, Chisholm's what, 22? How, 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 how young are you, Chisholm? <laughs> Chisholm? I'm a 76 baby. Baby. 76. 76? Oh, my God. Wow. Can I see, can I see some ID? I don't know if you're allowed in this room. <laughs> <laughs> um, I always, you know what I was thinking about today? I was uh, kidding with Marjorie. Uh, there's a, uh, a woman named Katie Turr, who's a reporter. She has a show on MSNBC. And I'm going... How much was her life defined by the fact that when she was growing up, kids at school called her turd? 
you know? And then I wondered, there's another woman on, on MSNBC called uh, uh, Casey Hunt. And I'm wondering how many people refer to her as Hasey. <laughs> hey, Hasey, how you doing, Hasey? Hasey. What was yeah. your original point, Alex, when you first started that whole segment about Mandy won't remember this because she's too young, and then you were going to say something? McCarthy. Oh, the McCarthy era. Oh, the McCarthy era. Oh, okay. We'll get back to that. I mean, the McCarthy era was a terrible era because people were being accused of something just because maybe they had done it 20 years ago. Okay. Maybe they had joined the Communist Party at 20 or sympathized with them or sent them a check as a, for a fund or something, whatever. And all of a sudden, here they are clear. and they're finding themselves in the 50s and they're losing work because they, at one point or another, we're a member of the, and the question always was not, are you a member of the communist party, but are you now, or have you ever been a member of the communist party? And they were rooting out people everywhere. And in the movie business, they held a special set of hearings for that in television. And there were directors that were out of work, you know, people like Jules Dassin, uh, and, and, uh, who was the other one? Uh, uh, the one that we that we really like that they made a movie about. Uh, uh, Trumbo. Uh, 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 who? Trumbo. Trumbo. Dalton Trumbo. 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 Yeah, these people all lost their work. Uh, these people couldn't work. Uh, Dasson had to move to Europe. Some committed suicide. Huh? Some committed you, suicide. Some committed suicide. Dasson had to move to uh, uh, Europe, where he made uh, Never on Sunday and took copy. And uh, what was that other film? The one I, I love uh, that was Rafifi, uh, which is one of the greatest caper robbery movies I've ever seen in my life. 45 minutes of silence while they're trying to rob this place. Uh, but anyway, the point I'm making is all these people had to go elsewhere to get work. My father one day took me to the Hungry Eye in San Francisco, which was a nightclub. And he said to me, he said, you know who's running the lights here? And I said, no. He said, a director who was part of the unfriendly 10. These were 10 Hollywood people who refused to testify. And they all went to jail. Trouble being among them, Dassin being another one. And uh, he said that guy was, you know, he was a director in Hollywood. So this is what happened to a lot of people because it was just insinuation. It wasn't you know, any kind of proof positive or trial being held or anything. And that's what's happening now. There was no trial for uh, for Louis C.K. There's no trial for uh, any of these people, you know, except Bill Cosby yeah. got a trial. OK. <laughs> hey, Alex. Alex, did you see there's a, a, a Chinese uh, American woman? She was born in China, up for a post for Biden and the guy Kennedy from Louisiana was giving, you know, she was giving testimony for approval for office. And he was saying, are, are you a member of the Communist Party, just like McCarthy? And she said, yeah. no. And he said, well, well, were you? Every child in China is automatically part of that. Well, no, they're not. And he says, do you have, but, he, you know, but she said, do you, in her, in her era, that she was, she's older than, than me, but, but he wanted to know if she had written a letter to leave the communist party because she could prove that she's no longer a member because she it was this whole testimony thing it was the most ridiculous ridiculous thing i've ever seen to begin with not everybody in china is in the communist party we learned that ourselves from the woman who was driving us around we said are you remember she her parents were a member of the communist party she said are you she said oh no we asked her uh, how do you like the fact that you, you about your voting rights and things like that here and she says well i can vote she said, if I'm a member of the Communist Party, but I never joined. You know, yeah, but back, oh, back, in the, back in the 50s, back in the 50s, every youth was in was was put into that. This changed in the 80s and 90s. Yeah. But uh, to, to, to somehow she moved to the U.S. She became an American citizen. You leave the Communist Party when you leave and, China. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but this was this was his way of trying to disgrace her the same way McCarthy yeah. would have. It was the it was disgusting testimony. Now, I always thought McCarthyism was a fear of ventriloquist dummies, but that's a whole. That's yeah, my whole right, right, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I, I always think I can't be more amazed by some of this stuff. But another thing I saw that the outrage, because I guess Louis C.K. has a new special and I didn't see it, but there was a commercial 
for it on Saturday Night Live this week, like a third, like, you know, 15 seconds, 20 seconds spot for it. And the outrage on Twitter that they would advertise for a Louis C.K. special. Oh, come it's on. It's unbelievable. It's, I missed the end. I want to see the special. I hate to say I got to go, but I got to go. We got another meeting upstairs. I um, appreciate you guys so, so much. Thanks, and uh, hey, if we don't remember history, it repeats itself. And I think we're seeing that right here. I can't yep. wait for the pendulum to swing back again. And it will. Okay. See you later. Love you guys. See you, man. Bye-bye. Bye. Uh, it's just, you know, I uh, mean, I knew Louis C.K. He worked. In fact, I, 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 was, I employed Louis C.K. at one point uh, for a thing that we did at the Palace of Fine Arts. A brilliant comedian, decent guy, you know. And the only thing he did, you know, as we know all know now, is he asked the three women were in his hotel room, and he said, "Do you mind if I pull out my penis?" And nobody very said, polite. He was very that's, polite. That's very polite. Yeah. Well, as I nobody, put it, I put it. No, what is he guilty of? Left. What is he guilty of? Good taste by asking ahead of time. <laughs> Of being a a gentleman. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, uh, the fact that he asked to me is an example, but he's okay. You know, I mean, he's, but none of them said no. They just stood there while he pulled his penis out. I think he's a victim of kink shaming. (laughs) (laughs) And and listen, hey, Alex, I have a question I'd like to ask you. Yeah. Uh, uh, No, forget it. (laughs) <laughs> no, Lynn, you cannot pull it out. Yeah, no, 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 no. No, but I mean, I just, I, it just kind of, uh, you know, it got to me because his whole career was ruined. I mean, he had TV shows. He had like about four or five TV shows he produced on TV. All of them got canceled. At one, one, yeah, the and, movie. And those that didn't, he was he was pulled off of it as executive producer. And uh, you know, it it was he had a movie. And they yeah. immediately said, we're not going to release the movie. Uh, we're signing it back to you. You now own it. You know, wow. I mean, uh, it's things like that. I mean, he really lost a lot. And all because of this situation, which he then apologized for. That's the other thing. Did he make an apology? Yes. Oh, good. Now we know he's guilty. <laughs> you know, so it took away all the incentive for anybody else to say, I'm sorry. Or I made a mistake, or I won't do that again, because you're admitting to it. The special is called "Sorry," and his and the stage set is a giant light sculpture that says "Sorry" that he stands in front of when he does that. Oh, Oh, really? What what network? I want to see this. He doesn't really talk about it on his website. Ten bucks, you know, you can download it from his website. Oh, you mean he's? It's not on Netflix. No, he's no one will show us. No, no, no. Oh, 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 is that you mean talking about Louis C.K. You're not talking about Dave Chappelle. Oh, okay. Uh, wow. I mean, I was at the live show. I recommend seeing it. It's, I mean, it's hilarious. Stuff. I mean, but it's just terrible, though, that, you know, that that, that, that people are, are being ruined by these insinuations. And that's what bothers me, is the insinuation of it all. Uh, the latest being, uh, who's, the, who's the guy I'm thinking of the last couple of days? Big deal. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember now. Sounds like no, it isn't. Chris Noth. Chris Noth. That's oh, it. Oh yeah. He, he was he's Mr. Big. Uh, and uh why? and if you're called that, why shouldn't you pull it out? Uh he, he was Mr. Big on uh on on Sex in the City, and a bunch of women had come forward because all of a sudden he's a big deal because he's on sex in the city. He's a big deal because the character was killed off in the first episode, you know? And, and so these women come forward now and make all these accusations about him. Well, you know, how do we know that any of them are true or not true? And yet he's having to suffer the consequences of just the insinuation. And that's not right. That's not right. He, and no matter what he does, I mean, even if he were a cold-blooded murderer, he's do a trial. You know what I'm saying? So it bothers me a great deal. It bothers me. It's always bothered me. Uh, as, and it, it's the new it's the new McCarthyism. But uh, any comments, Brian? You're driving around in your big Cadillac. <laughs> no, I'm just, no, I'm just... <laughs> 
Yeah, I, I don't know why. I, I don't know how just because somebody comes relevant again, they want to, you know, smash them again. Yeah. And, yeah. It's, it took him being relevant again for them to come forward. Yeah. Oh, that's what yeah. I was just saying. I mean, especially, if, wait, wait. especially if, if all this stuff is, you know, all these other people were being hit, why didn't they, you know, if a woman, you know, this happened to a woman, why didn't they feel confident enough to bring this up then? Mm -hmm. Why do they wait again, you know? Exactly. What were you going to say, Mandy? I just said that's what our society loves to do. We love to build people up just to tear them down. Just to tear them down. Perfect well, we, example, yeah. Britney Spears. Good example. Yeah. Very good example. Uh, you like, know. Like people took pleasure and, when she had her breakdown, her mental breakdown. You know? and, and they take great pleasure in that. And then after a while... They, you know, since they've now destroyed her, all of a sudden they're having a free Britney, you know, mm -hmm. they can run around yeah. saying free Britney and then build her back up again. Mm -hmm. it, it, terrible what the what people do in this in this society and in all societies. I, I imagine this would be just the same story in England right now or France or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. although we're probably the ugliest country of them all. But, you know, yeah. Uh, but uh, I, I don't want to get into that. This is our happy show. <laughs> you know, I think I think talking about the whole woke culture and all of that and how it affects people and the fact that people are losing work as a result of it is an important discussion, however. It has nothing to do with politics. Meanwhile, Edward Berger has been sitting there all day. And that's what right. Is, what is usually the spot reserved for? Oh, Rick. am I taking his spot? You're taking Rick, Rick's spot. Yeah, you're taking oh, Jackie's man. spot. Today. I am honored. Uh, Rick is uh, not here today because he's getting ready to uh, catch COVID on a cruise ship <laughs> in the Caribbean. Hey, maybe I can take his spot permanently. <laughs> <laughs> you got to, you got to learn, you got to learn more uh, Letterman anecdotes, or you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need yeah, to go, yeah. Need to go lie down in bed. Yeah, I just, I just watched on Netflix. They had that that one uh, Jim Carrey. He had a lot of clips from him when he was doing the whole uh, Andy Kaufman yeah. movie. Yeah, and uh, on Netflix, it's pretty interesting. I was gonna ask Rick how what he thought about all those types of things going on there. Yeah, but uh, it's, it's, it's pretty yeah. interesting. He really, he really, you know, Carrie really got into that role. You know, pretty crazy. Yeah. Well, is Shane having any second thoughts about this cruise? I I've talked to him the other day. He hasn't had any second. He didn't have. Well, he's gone now. He's not calling. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, and uh, he's not calling. So I'm, uh, you know, I assume that he he just he was going to go come hell or high water. High water. Does he does he go solo or does he does he have a friend that he does? No, he goes with? solo. He goes solo. Uh, solo. He, gets a, he gets a room for two because he wants a big cabin. Huh. Yeah. So he's always said, if I ever want to go and I want to pay for half of a room, he, I can stay with him. You know, we can hook up. Yeah. When you, when you guys were talking last week, the same thing with me. I have one travel friend. And him and I know each other so well. So we know when we want to be left alone. We know when we want to go out drinks and all that stuff. I, I kind of feel it's like the time I, I used to know uh, Dennis Hoff around the Moonlight Bunny Ranch. Uh, and every time I would go to the Moonlight Bunny Ranch, he would say, any woman you want here, you can have for half off because that's my half. Okay. And, uh, and I said, well, thank you. And I never took him up on the offer. It's the same way with Sheck and Shecky and a cruise. You know, he's offered this to me any number of times over the years. And I somehow cruise doesn't appeal to me. You know, yeah, me neither. Stuck on a boat with people is strange. Did we hear today about a cruise ship that had COVID? Royal Caribbean, 20 cases of COVID on the Royal Caribbean. 45. 40, oh, is it up to 45? Now it was 20 when we heard it. 45. Yeah. Yeah. When I when I travel, I try not to travel with people because I always end up being the translator and the guide and the I want a vacation. I don't want to work. Exactly. Yeah. People I get invited all the time. Hey, we're gonna go to this place. Can you come with us? I'm like, why? Because you want me to translate? Well, no, no, no. We just want someone you know who's been there. No, thanks. No, you know. No, you know. I go where there's no tourists. Well, no, I, I don't mind going. I it isn't going with Shecky that bothers me. It's the idea of a boat, a ship, in which I have to go where it goes. Okay, yeah. 
And I, if suddenly I'm saying, eh, I'm not enjoying this, I can't just jump overboard and swim to shore, you know, yep. do anything like that. You can try. Yep. There was the reason <laughs> I had a, a 40th uh, senior prom, a senior reunion, class reunion. And I, walk, I went over to the, they held it on a boat. And as I drove up to the boat, I got out and I looked at who was walking in and I immediately got in back of my car, called somebody I knew and said, I can't get on the boat. And they said, <laughs> why? And I said, because I'm going to be stuck on that boat with a bunch of old people. Because <laughs> they all look dreadfully old to me. I couldn't even tell who was who. You know, some, some pa people's faces looked like they had turned into melted caramel. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, you could have. I, they could have shown you the photos and found out about the kids that you didn't know you had. Well, also we used to have these cruises called uh, the uh, the radio station would hold cruises and would call Fan Appreciation Day, and we would all have to go on this boat, and it would sail around the bay in San Francisco, and uh, I couldn't stand it because I imagine being stuck on a boat. For three hours that you can't get off of with a bunch of fans. <laughs> it's dreadful. It's That's what dreadful. drinks are for. What? That's what what? That's what drinks are for. That's what drinks are for. <laughs> but you forget something. I don't drink. Mm -hmm. You know? I look, I'm a, I really appreciate anybody who drinks because what an anesthetic that is. <laughs> You know, go to family reunion. Fine. Get me yeah. more drinks over this way. More drinks. Oh, look, Uncle Charlie got really wasted at the party last <laughs> night. You know, <laughs> life of the party. Yeah. So anyway, you know, I uh, uh, I just I, I don't want to get stuck on a boat, uh, but I might still do it with Shecky sometimes just for the experience, you know, and I'm old enough now. I can just sit there and go, I don't want to go nowhere. I'm just going to sit here and wait for dinner. You know, uh, have, have you ever done a cruise? Jeff, you look old enough to have been on a cruise. Jeff, can you hear me? Let me you're, on mute. you're on mute. You're, you're muted. You're muted. I'm there. there we muted for a while. Yeah. So what was your question? I asked if you have ever been on a cruise. Yeah, um, no. So <laughs> we're the, two, the only two old Jews in the northern part of the United States that have not been on a cruise. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Well, you're not a Jew, though, Mandy. This is true. I'm not. I'm not a Jew. But I actually have a good friend and co-worker that is driving home right now from one. Yeah. Um, he, three days, he went with his daughter, his 18 year old daughter, just really? to the Bahamas and back. Mm, yeah, I think he gambled a lot. Shecky's is a uh, is a Caribbean cruise, but it's only a two. There are only 200 people on the ship. So, what? Yeah. So it's a, wow, that's a small. One. It doesn't small mean ship. It's yeah. free. Well, that that means that if 45 people get COVID, that's a larger amount than 3,000 people were. <laughs> 45 yeah. people get COVID. Yeah, I did one because my family, my, my it's like for my dad's 75th or something. We did uh, just Nova Scotia. And, uh, well, that must have been really nice. Yeah, that would be. Which is great. I would have much rather gone on a trip to Nova Scotia for three days than be stuck on this damn boat, as you said. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Where it's just fat old people who eat nonstop. I resemble that remark. That's the best part. <laughs> <laughs> Non-stop. Non <laughs> you know what we should do? We're just old enough. All of us should get together and have a uh Alex been a pop-up cruise. I agree. <laughs> that would, that I, would that would I would be all over that. Would you pick one boat, one cruise, and just invade it? <laughs> you know, not you now. Gotta wait for COVID to kind of yeah. We wouldn't make a dent. We wouldn't make a dent. Are we going to do? Are we going to do this every winter? Is every winter going to be COVID season? Your season. 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 We got good news today, though. Moderna. COVID. Yeah. COVID. Moderna has said that the Moderna shot with the booster is effective against Omicron. Yep. And right. we didn't get our say our our 
our booster as a half of Moderna. We got it as a full shot. Because they give out a half of a Moderna for the booster. Uh, mm -hmm. And now, but we had a full shot. So we, yeah, glow, we glow in the before dark. Before they determine if everyone should have a booster and how much, we just went and got it. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's so, but I mean, it, they, it, so how many have had Moderna? How many here? Moderna, Moderna. Okay. And how many Pfizer? Okay, well, goodbye. And it's been nice knowing. <laughs> <laughs> No, J and J, it's been nice. Oh, J, J, yeah, J, yeah, J, yeah. J, 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 J
<laughs> well, I mean, uh, you know, we, 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 people who are not uh, vaccinated should be kind of considered ostracized from the society. In other words, you can't do this. You can't go to football games. You can't go to baseball games. You can't go to basketball games. What? We have to put a V on there for Scarlet Letter of some sort? Well, close to that. I mean, what yeah. we've got to do is uh, we M. Uh, we 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 um, we need to do that because that way people will go, you know, part of the reason I quit smoking years ago was not because of anything else, but the fact that it was going, getting to be a pain in the ass to be a smoker. You know, it, it, I couldn't get into movie theater. I couldn't smoke in a movie theater. So I'd have to leave the theater to get a smoke during the middle of the movie, you know. Things like that. So out of just complete self-preservation, I decided that it was time to, you know, quit smoking. And I, oh, look. Oh, there he is, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, hey, from, is, that, is that Santifa Claus? <laughs> Anti-fascist Santa? Santifa Claus. <laughs> I was trying to change my name to Santa Claude. <laughs> <laughs> but for some reason, when I signed in, it didn't like it. Ladies and gentlemen, that is uh, there one, it is once a year Santa Claus, and he doesn't really have to do much to be Santa. He just has to put on the hat, and the coat, and he's you don't have to do anything else, did you? Nope. That was it. And this shit's hot right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he. That's he why I waited till ten on, till this time of I year. Mean, you this time of year, his main job was to be Santa. Yeah, but you're talking this COVID crap, so you know, I, I, the, this is the only way I can do it now. What as Santa? Get, get on a Zoom call with a bunch of Jews and talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> that's his real beard, by the way. That, that's not an accoutrement. Um, and uh, he, uh, you, you used to get a lot of work as Santa this time of year, right? Yeah. Yeah, actually, I got offered two of them this year, but I was busy. So, yeah, but you know, how would you feel about doing it full force this year? You wouldn't, right? You wouldn't want all those infectious little kids sitting on your lap. Eh, it depends. Depends on how they handled it. But, you know, yeah, I mean, I'm all I'd, I'd you know, drain myself in pine salt and drink a little uh, Clorox and I'd be good. <laughs> I think. <laughs> right. But I mean, I mean, that's that. Well, that was the way they handled it, right? Yeah, but this year is not the uh, not. The, you still have to be careful. You know, it's not. Yeah, so you just. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I went to the doctor this morning, and he's been pretty loose, and he told me to put on a mask before I came in. So. Yeah, yeah. Either that, or does every kid have to have a COVID test before they can sit on? Yeah, I want to see your papers, kid. Give me your papers. Yeah, yeah let's see your vaccination record. Uh, but uh, you know, I mean, it it. it, it he he's he used to get a lot of work doing that so yeah. i imagine your income has suffered this time of the year yeah yeah i'm on the uh ppp plan so what's ppp you know the 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 plan that uh was it trump started so we can get paid without working oh, oh okay so, and yeah. because your santa stuff has been screwed up as a result yes 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 yeah. <laughs> i'm just kidding well, it gets it gets screwed up during the summer because it's it's you know it's July it's July work, yes you know it's very seasonal work. Uh, when was when was the season for Santa? From about December first, right after Thanksgiving, right? Yeah, that's when I started getting jobs. Yeah, yeah, until Christmas Eve, and then that was it. They Boom. slam you, and that's it. Yeah. Next thing you know, we're showing balloons instead of guys with beards. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No, I wore my hat to the Niner game yesterday, and I almost made it to 10. Hey, there's Santa's. Three of them were in the bathroom, and the walls in the bathroom at the <laughs> stadium just look terrible right now. <laughs> that was a great game. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was a good game. So, so anyway, so uh, what are you all doing for Christmas? Uh, Edward, what are you doing for Christmas? Just fooling around. <laughs> uh, how about you, Andrew? What are you doing on Christmas? I am solo for the first time in 30 years. My wife went down to visit daughter. I don't celebrate Christmas. I'm going to sit on the couch in my underwear and, and uh, watch TV and I don't know, eat cheese. 
There you go. <laughs> that's living the life, I, man. That's living the life. That's, that's from Seinfeld. Remember, George, you broke up. He's, I'm going to sit on the couch. I'm going to eat a ball of cheese like an apple. Yeah. <laughs> that was his idea. And that he, was his idea. And he had a, he had a refrigerator next yeah. to it. Yeah. And let me show you what I just installed in the studio <laughs> here. Oh. Okay, George. Ah. <laughs> it wasn't that by accident, Alex. You it thought it was a big fridge? I the wrong refrigerator. Yeah. And we got the other one now, the beverage container. So anyway. So, I missed uh, what you showed because you weren't on my screen. Oh, oh, well, wait a minute. Then I'll show you. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. I've given up. Yeah, there we go. There's the there's the uh, now you never have to leave that room, huh? Yeah, yeah, I don't even have to leave. Don't call me for dinner tonight, darling. <laughs> I don't I need won't. you, yeah. But uh, anyway, um, so we have Santa, that's good, it, it makes us a holiday show, yeah. Yeah, I, you know, you, you yeah. ne- didn't have this last year, so I figured, yeah. what the hell? And I usually miss it during the day, and I was downstairs and I went, oh, it's almost two o'clock, maybe I can dig the crap out of the box and see if I can make it on. <laughs> uh, uh, Charlie, what are you doing for Christmas? Watching football. Watching football. How about you, Lynn? Yeah, we got football all week this week. Yeah, yeah there is. Um, just Thanks to COVID. To, I went to a friend's house, uh, have a big old prime rib dinner with them and relax. Oh, wow, that's nice. That's nice. That That's an expensive dinner this year. You know, I went to, actually went to Costco today, and they wanted twenty four ninety nine a pound for the prime rib. It's like, are you? Yeah. Oh last, my God. last year was six or seven dollars. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Thanks a, thanks a lot. Yeah. And Steve Bender, what are you doing uh, for Christmas? I mean, normally it would be Jumus, right? It's the Chinese food in a movie, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We do it every year. I don't know if we could do it this year. Hey, you need a delivery? Yeah. That's what we should do, Marjorie. Chinese food and a movie. We'll order in and a movie. Yeah, we'll probably order it in yeah. and do it here. Yeah. There, there was a re- there was right. a restaurant. There was a restaurant here called Gingsburg and Fong when I was a kid. Kosher Chinese. <laughs> it was a real restaurant. Jeff, I used to go when I was a kid. We would go to uh, my parents and my dad's friend that he worked with, and. He was Chinese, and his uncle worked as a Chinese guy in Chinatown. And so every Christmas, we had Chinese food. It was great. How about you, Brian? What are you doing for, for Christmas? Uh, we're going with two other families to Vegas for the 24th through the 28th. Are you taking, so, uh, you taking, you taking the kids with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're having one night out with the adults only. <laughs> so, yes. Well, when are you when are you leaving? Are you wearing plastic 24th. bags? Twenty fourth. Twenty fourth. You gonna dri- you gonna drive down there? No, 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 fly, we'll fly. Oh, okay. Yeah, because well, I don't know where you're driving today, but it must be a long drive. Yeah, it's almost two hours. Where from you? Lodi. Lodi. Where so north of Stockton. Remember, you said Tracy. Tracy yeah, we, it, it, Tracy is the place that you give directions from. To yeah, every, like Tracy. Tracy. Yeah, you turn left at Tracy, you turn right at Tracy, go north at Tracy, go south. Yeah, you, almost, Tracy. Oh, you must almost be to my house, Brian. Eh? Yeah, and I, oh, I can flip my phone. Here we go. Oh, there we go. So this hey, is the yeah, ultimate, yeah. Pass. Ultimate, ultimate, ultimate pass. Ultimate pass. Yeah. Ultimate pass. Yeah. Ultimate pass. He's exactly three or four miles from my house right now. Look, there's a Hell's Angel. <laughs> yeah, there was a cop earlier, but it's okay now. Gee, we should get you to drive by Lynn Lafrisco's house and he can wave. Yeah, I, we're going to work it out one day. We'll surprise you. We'll both be at his house on, yeah, on the call. That'd be, that'd be awesome. Mandy, what, what are you doing for Christmas? Um, I actually, my kids are, my daughter's driving from Texas today and her, she's going to see her dad first and then I'll see her. Wednesday, part of Wednesday and Thursday with my other daughter. But Christmas, it's just basically my sister, my mom, my brother, you know. Yeah. It's almost like my little, yeah. my little thing. My you, you, meet me in Cabo. Let's and of that. course, we're going to ask Santa Claude <laughs> what, <laughs> what, he, what he's going to do for Christmas. What do you think? <laughs> Sleep. Burn down Fox's Christmas tree? 
I'm going to go to the border of uh, Oregon and California and smoke dope. <laughs> that sounds good too. Oh, boy. Well, you know. Did you, did you know, Alex, that tree burned down because of Hannity's pants on fire? <laughs> it's true. True fact. Like you're not supposed to set up the Christmas tree on the same day you're doing a book burning either. So. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's true. Hey, listen, uh, everybody, I'll come, we'll do another show next Monday. I, I just love this show and I love the people on it and I love the way the discussion goes. It's just a civil, decent discussion about things and you're a bunch of civil, decent people as well. <laughs> And uh, that even includes you, Santa. Well, it's going to cost you extra cabinet bucks for this one. So, <laughs> oh, okay. I'll, uh, Which I know I'll never receive. So, I'll, I'll, nothing. Uh, well, uh, you get you get one gabnet buck for this. Woohoo! Yeah. Spend it everywhere. Hey, you betcha. thanks to Edward Berger. Thanks to uh, That's Andrew, right. Thanks to Charlie o. Wallace. Uh, thanks to Len LaFrisco, Steve Bender, Marjorie Miller, Jeff Stein, Brian Neary, Santa Claude, also known as Kevin Stopper, and of course the lovely and attractive Mandy O'Brien, who is the <laughs> Darla, who's the Darla of our little rascals uh, uh, show here. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, okay. of course, you know what we feel is that women are the bunk. <laughs> Are we the He-Man women's here? Yeah, him, he, well, actually, I'll just tell you this quickly, and then we got to get off. When I was uh, at uh, Live, Live 105 in San Francisco, I had, uh, uh, of course, Bobby Slayton as a comedian and a couple of other people that we knew, and we were all having bad time either with girlfriends or getting divorced or whatever. So we started the He-Man Woman Haters Club. Nice. And, oh, and, and our, our slogan was, girls are the bunk. And... Uh, <laughs> The girls were the G-I-R-L-Z, right? Uh, and uh, so that that we were the He-Man Woman Hates Club for a while. Every now and then we get together and He-Man Woman Hate. Anyway. Okay. Do the, do you do the, floor, the floor dory? So, you know, you would have been our Darla, Mandy. Okay. You, you would have been the Darla of the group. Thanks. You look so happy, Marjorie. <laughs> yeah. Mar Marjorie's a, 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 a Marjorie, who would Marjorie be? She heard it all. Probably the, the, been there. Probably the school teacher. Uh, <laughs> anyway, anyway, everybody, I love you, dear. In spite of that. Uh, let's You're uh, going to be you, stuck in there with your refrigerator. <laughs> you better lock that thing up. Lock it up. <laughs> give, a big, it up. give a big wave <laughs> goodbye, and uh, we'll uh, see you later, folks. Merry Christmas. Uh, have a great week. Bye-bye.